Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Great to have you with us on the show today. I know Dick and Milton wanted to talk about wrestling in the last half hour. We will certainly do that. Time now for our play-by-play call today. Kyrie Irving getting it done for the Celtics last night. The victory over the Raptors. Celtics only lead by 13 because Toronto's really good, gang. Kyrie, nasty step back. Scored in the foul. He went in on that right baseline. Pulled back. Siakam had no chance. Ooh, you're talking about some break. That was the noise I heard all of a sudden. (laughs) One guy stopped and the other guy couldn't stop. Sean Grandy with the play-by-play. Cedric Cornbread Maxwell with the sound effects on the Celtics radio network. Tomorrow, we're going to have Jeff Byers on the show. Penn State Wrestling, Nebraska, 1 o'clock on Sunday at the Jordan Center. Or it should be at, uh, at Rec Hall. So Sunday, Rec Hall, they have Nebraska. Nebraska's ranked 7th in the country. Uh, Penn State was pressed a bit by Wisconsin until they got to the middle weights, and then at that point, Penn State hit the accelerator and said bye bye. Uh, when you're looking at a lineup, what did I calculate the lineup at being? 114 and three in eight weight classes. 114 and three in eight weight classes for Penn State of the individuals projected. to be in the lineup on Sunday against Nebraska. 114-3. and three. Uh, TK Troy sent uh, over on Facebook that he read a site that was already projecting what Penn State could look like in 2020. He says that probably gives you an indication of what they're thinking about writing off any chance of anybody challenging Penn State in 19. So... They are the best program in the country. And it doesn't take a genius to say that. Well run, smart, track talent with complete ease. And an awesome fan base that loves them. Speaking of which, Dick and Milton. Howdy ho, Dick. How are you? Hey, Steve. How are you? I actually missed the last half hour. I went out and started my snowblower. Uh, it looks like it might snow, which also could affect us coming to Penn State, but I don't. I don't think so. We're gonna. We're gonna find out Sunday. Anyhow, yeah. we, you know, I don't miss the don't miss I'm the matches. And I was up there. I don't know if I'm getting bad. And the only thing that kind of concerned me about Penn State, and I, of course, rumors are rumors, and I'm not going to be sitting here and ever criticize Coach Sanderson because how could you? But you know, they wrestled Friday night in Indiana. They came home. I think they flew. I don't think they went on a bus. And then somebody I read online or read somewhere where he really worked the team out hard on Sunday morning. Now, some of it could have been fatigue, especially with some of those kids. It, it could have been. Uh, you know, I, I'm with you on, on this area, and I understand that. Uh, uh, but if that's his judgment, he's a pretty hard guy to question the judgment of. You know, because he's a guy that is not just thinking about Sunday; he's thinking about March. Indiana trip back, and then the day off, and yeah. then they probably did some stuff on Saturday, and then this is only what I heard that there was a that they had a relatively hard work. Maybe Jeff Byers would would know that, or you know, I don't know that. I'll uh, ask him. I'll, I'll but, ask him tomorrow. But and, and and obviously, two of the weight classes were upsets in a sense. Uh, uh, Forty one Lee. And and yes. forty nine was a, was a, an upset. Those kids weren't even ranked, but that happens. I mean, just that happens. And then and then the other kids. There was there were no pins. I don't think I've ever been to a, up there when I didn't see a pin, or rarely ever. 
Uh, obviously, that's a big difference between a, a three, or a four, or five, or a six-point win. And then without Joseph wrestling, so so what could have been, you know, was also a, a, a relatively good win, could have been a much bigger win with even one of those 41, 49-pounders winning and, and Joseph wrestling. Now, that kid at, that kid at, at uh, 65 for Wisconsin is, is really ranked. He's a real, Wick is really good. I mean, he's really good. In fact, he had a handful with... With our, you know, with our fill-in, with uh, you know, he did, he really did. I mean, Joseph probably would have beat him. He's tall, he's real tall and lean, and and uh, he'd he have a lot, a lot of height size on Joseph, and but he just doesn't lose. Uh, he always, he always adapts. But you know what? Wisconsin wrestled not, they didn't wrestle not to win. I don't mean it that way, but they they wrestled not to get pinned. I think they 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 fought now in the mat a lot, and they just kind of laid there in a sense. A lot of those kids did. They were tough to even turn. Well, well. In other words, they were trying to. If if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose by a decision. I am not going to lose by a major a tech fall, and I am not going to get pinned. In other words, I'm going to go out there, and the worst result I'm going to get is losing three. Well, especially North and Nichols are both guys that actually like the other guy to wrestle because they they do a lot of funky stuff and they and they put guys on their back when that kid's trying to wrestle. You, you right. understand. In other words, that kid's right. trying to wrestle and do some stuff, and he gets himself in trouble by doing that with those two kids, especially uh, right. those two guys. They're not kids, and basically, when, you, when they just laid out and laid there flat, they were tough to do anything with. They just were kind of like wrestling in a feed bag, in a sense, to me. So, well, and I mean, let's, I'll, I'll like give you a good example of what either, I think you're talking. You know, they either about. get them for stolen, or they just. Yeah. I'll so give you a good example of what I think you're talking about. When Nickel made the the great move and he beat Martin, right? Okay. Well, one of the reasons Nickel was able to make the great move is that Martin went for it. I mean, that's one of the reasons Nickel could make the great move is Martin, to his credit, was wrestling aggressively and was going for it, and then Nickel just caught him. I that mean, so I mean, a lot with North and him yeah. they could, because they're so funky in a sense. They both are. Hall's not. Hall scores a lot of points. He doesn't. He's not quite as. I'll use the word funky. That's my term. As as the other two guys are, Joseph. He just goes out, wrestles hard, and wins. Say, same. At, you know, they they pretty much all do. And the kid at heavyweight, he was a Wisconsin kid, was a ranked, ranked kid. So I mean, but it was a good match. It was okay. Uh, well, they 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 all. They're, I don't see him losing to dual meet, but anything is possible, especially if Joseph would not be back or something, especially against Ohio State. They're gonna they're gonna match up a lot of, lots of matchups you know just the way it's gonna be. Uh, uh, well, when you've got eight guys that are totaling 114 and three on the season, you're the prohibitive favorite in every single dual meet you go into. I think that's fair to say. Well, they're number one dual meet team. They're number number one tournament team, and that's according to Intermat, and that's by quite a bit. You know, if you looked at the point system. Uh, Will they be challenged? Uh, they'll probably be. Uh, Big Ten will be interesting. There'll be some good kids there in every weight class with the teams. I think that I think the way their lineup stacks up because of all the bonus points they get, they should be prohibited favors to win their national championship. The way it's looking right now, if everybody's oh, healthy, you know, in which they to are. Be honest, hopefully well, they are. No, no, nobody seems. They don't talk much about you know that football. They don't talk a lot about injuries or or illness or anything. So hopefully Joseph's back in the lineup, you know, especially this week again against Nebraska. We'll see what happens. And on a, on a sadder side of wrestling, the uh, the 133 pounder from uh, from Scott Parker from Lehigh, who's been out this year pretty much, a two-time NCAA uh, All-American, two-time EIWA champion, has uh, has given up wrestling for the rest of his career. That's it's sad. With, That's with sad. The injury. Injury. You know, he was he was basically on his way to be another All American this year. He's really, really good. And it's sad to see it, a young youngster young kid that age. So but he yeah, because remember when week. they wrestled Lehigh, Penn State shut them out. But I remember going right. into the match, it was it, I remember everyone was wondering whether Parker would go because it would be a great test and it would be one of the marquee matchups of the of the day if he went. Well he didn't go and Lehigh didn't score. Right, and the local kid from Milton, Pennsylvania, New Columbia down here, the Ryan Price is out. He's been out. He hasn't really wrestled much this year at all. And also, the they have a Cole Walters from Mifflinburg, at six, 65-pounder, hasn't wrestled. So they've got several guys out besides Parker. They're okay. I mean, they beat they beat a lot of teams, uh, especially in the IWA. They struggle with not struggle. They they've lost 
quite a few matches against top 10 or top 20 teams only because they don't match up very well with three, three or four guys out of the lineup. It's just anybody that could happen to anybody. As they say, we went down to Allentown last year when they wrestled Lehigh and Penn State had Joseph out, and they won it at the heavyweights. You know, the matches were close, and they won. Penn State won the over dual meet at heavyweight. That's how it, that match ended with one one really good kid out of the lineup. So, you know. Well, if you have if you have three really good ones out, you're losing potentially nine to twelve points in those three. Now, those that's that swings a duel me because nine for three major nine for three decisions twelve for if you get uh, four majors out of it or some other bonus point when you lose nine to twelve like that points in your lineup you're not going to win a lot of duel meets. Well, as I say, Penn State should win. They've got they've got Nebraska coming in, and they've got Michigan coming in to the actually to the Bryce Jordan Center. They have to travel to Columbus to wrestle Ohio State yet, and there's no cakewalks in the Big Ten. There's, you know, most everybody at, at that level of Ohio State, especially, and also Michigan has lots and lots of really good kids in that lineup. So you have to perform every day. I mean, Penn State will be favored. Uh, uh, boring injuries or you know illness. That's another thing. You, you get this time of year, one kid gets ill or maybe two kids, you just never just get sick. You know, they maybe don't feel good that week. You know. You don't you don't maybe you don't notice it much in football, uh, with that many kids on the team, but you you sure notice it in a wrestling match if one or two guys are out of the lineup. <laughs> yes. Or in a basketball game where there were calls earlier your, or your talk earlier about tennis. That always gets me excited. I get excited about wrestling. I I used to get that way about football. I I'm still I'm still really into it and um you know anything Penn State obviously is is a, gets me excited, in the, especially wrestling right now. It just it's, this is almost a, unheard of in college athletics. It just is. So. Yeah, I mean there have been certain ones that have gone a long way. Obviously, Iowa did this. There was a period of time in women's soccer where North Carolina won like four in a row. But in this particular century, we haven't seen anything like it in the 21st century. Nothing, nothing like it this century with the dominance of Penn State Canada wrestling. Women's basketball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you they didn't lose very much either until no. they, well, they lost a, a, a regular game this yeah, year. But they, uh, yeah, they hardly ever lose. Yeah, UConn women's basketball obviously is is another one as well. And again, there's always going to be a debate by those who. Now, as a Penn State fan, you're not interested in this debate, and nor should you be, because your no. team's winning, and not only that, they're exciting. But then there will be people that will ask, is it good for the sport? Is it good that UConn is? And I think that dynasties are good for the sport, and the reason is this, UConn women's basketball, Penn State wrestling, because they're so good that the casual fan does want to see them. Now, not during the regular season. Okay, no offense, Dick, but nationally nobody wants to see a, a wrestling dual meet in the regular season. The real fan does. But when they get the Nationals, they want to watch and see because of Penn State. Right? Now well, that draws in the Pittsburgh, casual obviously, fan. Obviously, big tens are in Minneapolis yeah. or Minnesota. Yeah. And the, uh, but, that, uh, but they'll draw the in. The championship, so that'll be a big deal, uh, obviously. And then next year but, they're going to Minneapolis for the... NCAA's. I'm not sure where they wrestle out there. Maybe they wrestle in the football stadium and uh, shrink it down like Syracuse no, does no, for no. basketball. I don't no, even they'll, know. No, they'll, they'll go to the they'll go to the Target Center where the so Timberwolves how many play. Do you have any idea? Uh, you know? Nineteen thousand. You must probably know this. And what's the venue at Pittsburgh where they where they play basketball uh, wrestle? What, P- what's that? PPG, PPG Paints and it seats. Uh, I think for wrestling they'll be able to get seventeen thousand in there. So it's about two thousand less in Cleveland and St. Louis then. Yeah, yeah. Because again, yeah. part of it is, as you know, part of the setup is this: uh, because of all the the tables needed for the media and the officials and so forth, it does take away some seating. So it's going to be between, I think, seventeen and eighteen thousand for wrestling. Yeah. Okay, so I know I just been to Oklahoma City, I've been to St. Louis, I've been to Cleveland, and I just know those venues were I think big, larger than that. I think Oklahoma City was even larger. Of course, there's eight mats out when they start, and they keep shrinking them down, obviously, till right. and they can always put more seats out that way. But I I only heard this for skull about that that Pittsburgh was the venue there was less seats, and I don't even you know I'm not sure how they figure it. Or but of course, you've booked it. your you booked your hotel for Pittsburgh, Dick, correct? What's that? You've booked your hotel for Pittsburgh. You're set, right? My brother lives there at Bullsburg. He takes care of all that stuff. I just get in the car and ride. 
Uh, <laughs> PPG I get, paints. I, 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 have a, I get the tickets. They, they, they drive, and we ride, and we get out. PPG yeah, paints. Had hotel for a long time. Yeah. PPG paints seats 19700 for hockey. So it's about the same size as the Target Center in Minneapolis. Mats and but, tables and... Yeah. Yeah, so it is pretty good size then. Yeah, no, well, I mean, I just did... I've, I've done a couple basketball games in there. And obviously, it's a beautiful... You're going to love it. It's a beautiful venue. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful venue. And I think wrestling fans are going to love it. And I think it's a great way to get it into Pennsylvania so the Penn State fans have a, about the easiest trip you could possibly ask for. The next year, the Target Center is about the same size. Well, they're going to go to uh, Detroit, too, eventually. I think they're heading there uh, uh, in the next year, that, two years. But the other thing that's going to happen yeah, here, you and that would be this, and, to, I mean, he has a lot of insight into this, inside the information sometimes. I think the goal of the NCAA is to have, have it basically held in St. Louis. Maybe. Uh, words, uh, by like, the way, like did, baseball's right. done one place, and unlike uh, basketball, Detroit, which moves around, I think that Detroit, they would like they would like to have it in St. Louis. I keep hearing this. I think they consider it more of a central location. I don't think it's fair to these coast teams, but that's if they do it, they do it. Central location for what? I mean, well, no offense. The, you got the Big you got, let, the, let, you got the Big 12 teams out there. There's a lot of wrestling powers out throughout there. I mean, they're not yeah, Penn State. Okay, but, There's lots of them. Yeah, there are, yeah, all these great wrestling programs from, from, uh, from California, uh, Texas, the SEC. All right, there aren't any. I mean that's not What's a central that? location. I mean there aren't any West Coast programs. There aren't well, any a, Texas or Southeastern other than programs. Just, State, Bakersfield, and some in Oregon State. There's a few, but then when you start coming coming west, though, then you got Nebraska's, you got the Oklahoma States, you got the Oklahomas, you got the Minnesotas, the big, the, of the majority of the Big Ten schools, other than Penn State and Maryland and Rutgers, and you know they consider Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan closer out there to yeah. there than they are to here. I mean, and then, Columbus, you know, Columbus just, is more know, central to the got, sport. Let's be honest. Yeah, with a lot of those schools out through there. Iowa, Iowa State, Iowa State, uh, uh, Northern Colorado, Northern Colorado, uh, Northern Iowa. I think but, I don't do but, the math. But, but, I'm only telling you what I keep hearing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just telling Dick. West of the Mississippi, yeah, you got Oklahoma, whatever. But west of there, there's nobody realistically a factor. I mean, there's nobody realistically a factor. That's why, I mean, I'm not disputing what you're saying about St. Louis, but, like, centrally located. Centrally located to what? Well, to, I mean, to what I they mean, consider I mean, the to, wrestling to, hotbed, to, other than Penn State and a, a few teams in East. I'm just telling you what I've been hearing. I've been hearing this oh, since I I've know. been going out oh, there. No. I've been out there twice now. That they oh, would no. like that, make that a central location for the NCAA wrestling. I, maybe they have another reason for doing it. I don't know. I, I, I'm not disputing you at all, and I'm not arguing with you at all. We're not in, we're not in, in dispute there. I'm saying, realistically, what's centrally located for the world of wrestling? Maybe St. Louis is because of how close Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Iowa State are, and Minnesota, whatever. But in the West and in the South, it's you know you can pick out oh well, Cal State, Bakersfield, Stanford, whoop de do. Uh, Southeastern Conference, they don't bother with it. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, now all those I mean, teams have to travel all the way to the East Coast from the West Coast and the central part of the country. So I, I just use it as a central geographically. It's a central part of the country. I think that's maybe that's their reasoning. I don't. Know. I mean, like I understand the, the state for stuff, and sometimes. Oh they're... yeah, and I, I get what you're saying about it, but I mean, I think you've got to keep it in the areas where. You know, there's some semblance of trying to grow the sport and putting it in one spot. I don't know if it grows the sport. Well, we've had this discussion again about growing the sport, and I told you, you know, you can get on every night and see what the football or baseball or or uh, basketball stuff is, and you still literally have to pay anything to get anything in NCAA wrestling. Well, I tell you, yeah. if if I'm a wrestling fan, this is what I I would worry about more than anything else about the future of my sport. If at some point there is a decision made that is in favor of student athletes being paid, all right, and you know it, and it'll take a while for it to happen because it's going to have to go up the judicial ladder. Maybe it goes to the Supreme Court at some point because you know that when the NCAA loses, they'll do what you expect and what. If I'm in charge, what I'd do too, I'd I'd appeal it. But when you run out of appeals and say they have to pay student-athletes, you're going to see people dropping sports. And Penn State's not going to drop wrestling, but 40 other schools might. 
There's only 70 some or 80 some. I know. Uh, there's, Se- not, there's, there's, se- one. there's se- There's not 74 a lot compared to the other uh, 74. basketball and football and baseball yeah. and stuff. But and it's kind of like lacrosse. There's not near as many either. It's just the way it is. Uh, you know, I, the numbers have to be there. I'd be more concerned that the high school wrestling is starting to dwindle, especially in places in Pennsylvania. There won't be any athletes to enough athletes to to wrestle. Yeah, I'm like. Yeah, and that, that, that is a big concern. And so that's why when somebody brought up to me about student-athletes being paid, because I think there's 74 wrestling teams uh, in Division One, 74, 75, something like that. My concern would never once be that Penn State's going to drop it. Zero. My concern would be is that if they had to pay student-athletes, 40 schools may go, if this isn't worth it, they'd drop it. Now you're dry, Now you're in the 30s. Well, my last comment, and I'm going to let you go, is is what you, how do you think this uh, sports betting is, is is going to affect college sports? You know, do you think it is or not? That's a really great question because it's been in, in existence now here in Pennsylvania, Jersey, Delaware, and I don't see anything so far that indicates one way or the other which way it's going. I mean, you and I both know that the casual fan. Or they may really be into it, but now they're more into watching every second of every game because you know, hey, you know, X has a seven point advantage over somebody else on the board. So I think it's it's, I, it's so far. I think it's been negligible. I don't know. What have you thought? Well, I don't know. I, I'm not sure because I don't follow the lines on anything. But the other thing is, I'm still concerned about, and I hope I'm wrong about this. I'm hoping they never get to an athlete to shave points in, in an event. Well, okay. Let me let me address that. That's a really good question. I think over time it is the person. Okay, for example, uh, just, uh, let's take Sean. Sean may a guy who may be really interested in sports, and he's the guy that's going to go down to Penn National, where they now have a sports book and it's open, and he'll put some money down on the Steelers, or he'll put some money down on a on a college sporting event. But he's going to put down maybe fifty dollars, seventy five, a hundred, couple hundred. The people that can influence, okay, something are the ones that have big money and have the ability to use big money for influence. That has always existed. Okay, the big money people who are already betting offshore to begin with, right? are always the ones that have had a lot of money to play with, not the small better that's going to bet 25, 50, 100. You're going to walk up to an athlete and go, hey, for 50 bucks, can you fumble the ball on the on the three-yard line? It's it's not going to happen because it's got to be it's got to be somebody with a lot of money, a lot of influence and an athlete going, man, I could really use the six figures, the five figures, whatever the number may be. At that time, I think that's where it, it, that still exists somewhere in the deep, deep, dark recesses. But it's the, the small better can't influence that. I don't think. I'm the small better. I bet two, one or two dollars in the lottery, even when it's five hundred million. See you, Steve. Hey, it's the hey, Dick. That's the unofficial. That's the unofficial of uh, retirement plan of Dick from Milton. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dick. It's great to talk with you. All right. The the king is coming up, isn't he? He can't wait till tomorrow. He's on today. Is he still excited based on last week's records? We'll find out. (laughs) All right, we'll have some fun with that. Dick Girardi, Jeff Byers tomorrow. Basketball, wrestling, among other, other guests tomorrow. Here on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sunbury Motors is bringing in the new year with a lofty goal. Sell 1,000 new Fords in 2019. You heard right. 1,000 new Fords. SMC knows they can achieve this lofty goal, and here's why. Sunbury Motors Ford has 2019 Ford Fiestas starting at 12820. That's a new car for under 13 grand. Browse Central Pennsylvania's largest selection of four-wheel drive vehicles. Pick from 68 Ford Escapes, and they're slashed to as low as 17820. SMC has already 
remaining 2018 Ford Explorers reduced by eight grand. Starting at 33,985. Sunbury Motors has over 100 new Ford trucks with F-150s marked down up to $14,000. And Super Duties as much as 15 grand. SMC's goal of selling 1,000 new Fords in 2019 will be your gain. Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury. Proudly serving all of Central Pennsylvania and the Susquehanna Valley for over a century. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. All right, Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Jeff Byers on wrestling tomorrow. Dick Girardi on basketball tomorrow. And now the king on picks. Sean, you may allow him to enter the transfer portal. The most interesting man in New England. What's next after New England? East Coast? Did you ever read about a frog who dreamed of being a king and then became one? Uh, no, I, I, did he ever... Let me guess, did he end up wearing a suit? No. But except for the name and a few of the changes, the story's the same one. You're talking about me. <laughs> name the song and the artist. I am, oh, I no. said, Neil Diamond, 1972. <laughs> there you go. Bang. It's been this on is, my mind all day long. So I don't this know is, why. This is Sean's area of expertise. He'll knock it out yep. of the park every time. A.K.A. We would nail it. A.K.A. the Jewish Elvis. Yes. Yes. God, he was good. Oh, amazing. I brought Mom to see him. Oh, she was oh, yeah? standing up and clapping, and, you know, oh, good. I was sitting down and still eye to eye with her, but she was so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, she was, oh, she was so excited. So okay. Let's see. Oh, and I got bad news for you, dude. Uh-oh. She deserved that. Oh, okay. We lost another football teammate. So Joe Semino passed away. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Joe, Joe, number 68 for us. He was he was the right guard. Uh, excuse me. He was the left guard, and I was the left tackle. We played side by side with each other yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. What a yeah, great he guy! He was an all-state offensive player, and he was a defensive end. So. Yeah, he was a terrific, terrific player. Even better guy. I really liked yeah. Joe. He was just a wonderful, wonderful guy. Always had a smile on his face. I really don't know how he died, but I believe it was a heart attack. Oh, what a shame. Boy, did I yeah. like him. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. That was yep. one of those that you hear it and you're like, oh, no. You know, yep. the world uh, he, lost a good man. So. Yeah, no, they'd be on the offensive line. He carried me for two years. <laughs> oh, he was an all-state offensive guard. He was great. Oh, he was he's fast. Terrific. Big guy yep. who could run like the wind. So. Yep. Yeah, that was quite a shocker. So his dad died last year. So. Oh, boy. Yeah, I remember his dad, too. Yep. Right wow. now, he was at the shop a lot. Right. Yeah. You know, but awesome. Anyway, man. sorry to be the bearer of bad news. A big shocker around here. A lot of people knew him and liked him a lot. And mm. So, uh, okay. I am, I said, <laughs> Neil Diamond, 1971. I was off by a year. 71. 71. That's, oh, God. Get your, I get your, I, I Sean, get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> My ex brother in law, uh, Keith, went to, oh, God, what college? Right by Foxborough, but Pace? I'm not sure. I forgot, but the limousine pulls up at graduation, and uh, it was Neil Diamond. His daughter was in this class. So. Oh, cool. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. So, Very nice. You know, he didn't make a scene, but, I mean, he did arrive in a limousine. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we had a Chevy. But. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, what up? What up? What, how's the basketball team look? Good? I saw him on uh, TV. Not struggling. So good. Struggling. Struggling. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know... Dick Girardi and I did last night's game. We were walking out of the George Center, and I said, Dick, I don't know what to think anymore, only because I thought that 
if they could keep the live ball turnovers down in a game, if they could get seven to ten threes made in a game, and they could play with the lead, I thought that would be the formula to win. Well, the live ball turnovers were, yeah, they had a couple, right? They hit 12 threes last night, a dozen. And they played with the lead for 24 to 25 minutes. They still didn't win. It's like, I said, Dick, I don't really know what to think anymore because now they've gone, they've had eight games that have gone to the final minute of the game, and they're two and six in those games. Truth be told, when I saw Lamar Stevens bounce past that to John Harris for the dunk, I thought they had that game nailed. Yeah, I know. It's, but you know what? In three of those six losses, the opponent, to their credit, has hit a big three that changed the dynamics of the last minute. Anthony Cowan of Maryland hit two. Uh, Glenn Watson of Nebraska, and look, the shot clock was down to like two. So, I mean, Watson's just trying to do the right thing and just look, if I can just get it up near the rim, maybe we'll hit the rim, or maybe we can get a rebound and keep the possession going. Well, it hit the flange, bounced up, hit the rim, bounced up again, went through the net, and they got three points out of it. You're like, suddenly a one-point game is is four. And then Bohannon you know last night, Bohannon last night then hit that straight on three. And again, this is where if you're going well, you're the one that makes the winning plays. Last night, Watkins and Stevens, the right guy, Connor McCaffrey, shoots the ball for three. That's the guy Penn State wants shooting. Connor's a good player, but right now, in this stage of his career, is not a great three point shooter. He's one of 11. He takes and he clanks it off the back iron. Watkins and Stevens both go out to the rebound, and between them are averaging 16 rebounds a game. They cancel each other out. Joe Wieskamp then ended up with a loose ball. They kicked it out to Bohan, and he hit the three, and that changed the game. You know what's concerning to me? And me and Sean were talking about it off the air. No matter how, they're just not a big program yet, or will they ever be, because they can never... Back with what were their names? The Crispins, yeah. Who were the, okay? And you thought, boom, this program's on its way, and they could never recruit off of it. Last year again, they had a big year, and I know they lost a couple guys, but they don't seem to be able to recruit off of success for whatever reason. You know that that. Then they have to wait around for another super duper year, and it, it's like a pattern that they follow, and it's it, it's too bad, you know. Because you think after last year they they'd have brought in that was a fun team to watch, and it was. And you know what? It's, see, I feel that Penn State to have any kind of long term upper level success, yep. they have to be consistently the older team. And that's where you talk about guys leaving, for example. Obviously, guys like Julian Moore and, and Shep Garner, they graduate. That's that's natural, right? But when they recruited Tony Carr and Lamar Stevens, I thought they were, wow, those are two really good players, but they're also two really, really good four-year players. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that Tony, hey, look, good for him. You know, after two years, he decides to go pro. He gets drafted by the Pelicans. He's now playing professionally in Italy. But something like that happens is a blessing and a curse. The blessing is nobody can recruit against you and say that you can't develop NBA players and you can't recruit guys to get to the NBA and go to Penn State. You can't do it anymore. It's off the boards. Penn State can. Right. So there's the blessing. The curse is he's not playing for you anymore. Uh, yeah. And so, so, then you, so then you go from being a team on the path to being one of the older teams to now being one of the teams that's now at the moment three oh seven in experience in the country. Right. Yeah. That's tough. So yeah, it's not not an easy road. Hope for next year, you know, that they finish yeah. out the year with confidence well, and they'll be tough next year. But well, God, you I'm, want them to be consistently a power <laughs> like football. They're gonna graduate this many guys, they're gonna bring in Yep. The guys uh, who will replace them, you know, yeah. over that they'll mature. Right. Uh, no, it's just no never happened with the basketball program. So, well, what we'll that. do is before we get to the picks, let's take that last break, and then we'll come back and do our picks as we continue on News Radio 1070 WK. Okay. All right, not much to pick this weekend, but we've got time to pick a couple of games because that's what we have, a couple of games. Three to go and the season is done. Well, 
Then the winter gets we're, longer. We're not going <laughs> to catch on, Steve. <laughs> and I'm uh, not going to catch you. So I thought that back in September. Which means <laughs> I am the pickle master. So I will work this out. And I'm not going to say how. So. <laughs> Sean, you will receive your pickles. <laughs> when you least suspect it. I don't know. After <laughs> I was one in three last week. I don't deserve any after last week. Yes, what? you do. Oh, my uh, God. What's your record for the year? Uh, 77 and 30. Good Lord. <laughs> That's just... It's not yeah. bad. 47 it's, games over 500. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, two weeks ago, you know, Stefano was 0-4. He bounces back last week with a 3-1. Yeah. King, you were 2-2. Two and two. So, Steve, overall, you were at 65 and 42, and Kev, you were at 62 and 45. I lost. I deserved it. <laughs> I did so bad at the start. It was like, wow. Well, for I, a while there, you're. But the thing is, though, I, you were. I don't think you were ever under 500. You were at 17 and 17, or what, 19 and 19? So. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, hey, that's the way it goes. It was fun. You know, you have good years, you have bad years. You pick them the way you see them, and but Sean, you just nailed it. Yeah, hey, I'll be that's thirty. I'll probably be thirty. I've ever seen. I'll so. probably be thirty and seventy-seven next year. <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah. And, and the and the, the key will be epiphanies. You'll still win. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all right, who's gonna win? All right, Sunday doubleheader here on WKOK. We'll have the nationwide broadcast with Westwood One. Three oh five uh, will be the A, the uh, NFC Championship game. Will be first. Uh, the Rams at the Saints. That game's first. Yes, NFC is first. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. I thought Kansas City was first. Yeah, last year the AFC oh. game was first last year, so they flip flop them each year. Oh, yes. I thought that too. I thought the AFC one was because that's how that I mean, that's how it's been so far here in January. All the AFC games were first, and then the NFC games were the primetime games. Huh. Yeah. How about that? So, but Rams Saints first. Um, Aaron Donald and Indomitian Sue. I think Sue Sue has played really well. Uh, the Saint. We haven't seen really the Saints' high-powered offense here over the past month. And you'd think maybe if the Rams get enough defensive pressure up the middle to have Breeze get a little frazzled here and there, but just something about that dome and that place going crazy. And I would think, I mean, Ross Tucker was the field reporter last Sunday for Westwood One. We had him here on WKOK, and I think he was, he, he was on with Dan Patrick on Monday morning, and his ears were still ringing. Uh, uh, just because of that home field, I'm going to take the Saints. Okay. Who's up? Uh, I'll take the Saints as well. I, I think that uh, what's interesting about this game to me is that, and the other game as well, all four teams are completely different than they were in October. In fact, we may see two games in the 20s after thinking that these that all these teams in October would all be in the 40s. I think the Saints will win because I think they'll play a little bit better defensively. I also don't think that the corners for for uh, the Rams are good enough to handle Michael Thomas. He's good. Well, you know fans love the points, 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 and um, that's the cool thing the last few weeks. At least the defense, the defenses have been showing up finally. Well, these are the four best offenses in football, and I believe the four best teams, so the NFL got it right this year. Um I, I personally am just picking who I want to win, and I want New Orleans to win. I want to see Drew Brees get back in again, and I agree with you guys. I mean, playing in that dome, as you saw last week, once the crowd got into it, the game was over for Philly. I mean, it, and you knew New Orleans was just going to keep on going, and that 18-play drive, that was fascinating. But... I got New Orleans. See, that's where New Orleans has changed. New Orleans was a high-flying September-October outfit. Now in the last month, they've become a grinded-out team, and they grounded out last week against Philadelphia. I'm just curious how many... when you can run, you know? I'm just curious how many plays on defense with the Rams, if they're going to... You know, how many plays are they going to double-team Michael Thomas? 
Well, you're going to have to. I yeah. think. Yeah. I, I think that's where Philadelphia made a big mistake last week, where you know darn well he's the guy, and you keep letting letting the guy beat you. That and New Orleans defense shut Philly right down yeah. after the. Yeah, I mean, uh, New Orleans defense is very good. They shut them down. There was nothing open for Foles. And then New Orleans is controlling the ball and controlling the clock. They, yeah. uh, my gosh, that was just a total mismatch. I only saw the part of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, and I was just stunned that Philly had absolutely nothing. But Philly never had a running game all, all year, and they needed that. And they didn't have it. And so. we got a couple of minutes to go, so we'll knock out the other game, AFC Championship game. Uh, 640 Sunday here on WKOK, the Patriots at the Chiefs. We'll talk about another home field advantage. Kansas City will be my pick in this one. And I know, you know, it's and I know how great Brady is. I know the Patriots put together a great performance last week on both sides of the ball. But I, I just feel that Kansas City's just, it's just a total gut feeling. I just think Kansas City's going to win. I thought last week the stage would be too big for Patrick Mahomes because I just thought the Colts defense would just get in there and tee off on him, but that didn't happen. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Chiefs as well. Yeah, like I said before, I'm going to go with who I want to win, and that's Tom Brady. Um, the Patriots, the only way they can win the game is to have a controlled run game and keep Mahomes off the field. If they try a shootout, they can't win, um, just my opinion. But if they do what they did last week and have long drives and run Sony Michelle and run White and quick passes to nullify the pass rush of those uh, defensive ends, just Brady get rid of the ball quick. It's going to be a tough. The Patriots will be a tough out. You but. brought up a key name, James White. I mean, you know, he made his presence known in the postseason last year, and we'll see if he can make a difference too on Sunday. Yeah, they he would be. be he, but. It would be the concern I would have for the Patriots in that game. I know it's going to be warmer than they thought, but warmer means twenty degrees. This game's on grass, and it's not on field turf. Yeah. That could this be a is big not, deal. Yeah. And this is not what the Patriots are used to, all right? It, it's, it's playing. I mean, I know they've won on grass, I mean, so forth. But they're not used to playing on grass, especially at this time of the year. And Kansas City is, and I think that is a difference in terms of your ability to cut, make a play, confidence in what you're doing out there. That's a good point. We shall see. Have a safe trip. Yeah, going to Minneapolis. Huh? Bring in my bathing suit. <laughs> Today's show brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Your station for news, weather, business, and CBS Sports Radio. News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury and on WKOK.com.